Hey guys and welcome in today's episode where I have a gripe with my Asus Zephyrus G16 laptop. This is the 2024 model. The same laptop that I had a problem with a rattling noise inside of it because there were quality control in Asus. Like most manufacturers nowadays, all the products are made for the shareholders, not for the people actually buying them and that sucks. So this brings me back on topic because, well, believe it or not, it feels a bit slow. Yeah, I suspect that the NVMe drive that it's in there, and this is a one terabyte NVMe drive, it's a bit slow. That's because, well, Asus cheaped out. And I'm basically planning to use this right here. This is a 990 Pro one terabyte Samsung NVMe drive that I'm basically planning to replace the one in the slot there because that's a Gen 4 4x4 lane. Uh, supported the slot on the motherboard and I want to replace that with this and basically the drive that's already in there I'm just gonna populate the other drive bay which is available to me because well that's not as fast but that's not a problem because this drive isn't as fast either but before we do maybe it is just me so we'll do a boot up time test and see how long it takes to boot into the OS then I'm gonna show you what basically what Crystal Disk Mark has to say about how fast this drive is and after all it's said and done, I'm just gonna clone this drive as it is onto this new one right here just so that we have all the data in the same place with the OS being the same uh, so that we don't run into any sort of discrepancies and then we're gonna do the tests again and see where we land. So this is basically what we get with Crystal Disk Mark for this laptop right here and I'm sorry to say but this is nothing to write home about. I mean yeah, it's nice. It's an NVMe drive, Gen 4. Okay, it's not a Gen 5, but come on, Asus, you kind of cheaped out, haven't you? But no worries, that's why we have this. So I will just quickly do a boot test, see how long it takes for this machine to boot with the OS as it is. And right after all said and done, I will install this guy into the drive in here and I'll show you how to actually clone the existing drive onto a brand new one and we can repeat all the tests and see if there's any changes. So this is a bit disappointing, 26 seconds in this day and age with an NVMe drive. Ouch. All right, let's get to installing this brand new guy in there and see how we do after. <laughs> While I get everything set up in here, you'd be absolutely amazing and wonderful if you, you know, take the time and subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, you know, so you don't miss any of the videos because, well, YouTube kind of promotes videos that, uh, you know, forces people to do and say these sort of things because how else would you know to subscribe to a channel if I don't tell you? Hmm. Algorithms. We have a basic set to work with in order to open up this laptop. This is a Torx bit, so your standard, uh, you know, screwdriver with the Torx bit on it and basically a plastic spudger. That's all we need to take this laptop apart, which is absolutely amazing from the design point of upgradability and accessibility. So that's uh, one good avenue you went on Asus. Keep it up more in the future. So let's get it open then. I have been inside this machine once before, so it is nothing really complicated. I'll just keep track of the screws here because, well, I don't want to, even though they're all kind of the same length, I don't want to mess them up and I, and I do want to actually put them back in the same place where they came out of. So we'll take out this little two rubber uh, feet here because they actually hide two screws. One under each feet here. Alright, take them apart. Now that all the screws are out, be mindful because these screws here on the bottom, so this is basically where the trackpad, uh, where the trackpad is they are shorter than the other screws around here. So yes, do keep in mind where all the screws go so that you're able to put them back in the same place, not to damage anything. Now it's time for the friendly spudger and we'll start right here at the top. This is where the hinge will do, would go and we'll start lifting and prying up on the corners. And once you have a corner pried up like so, you take your spudger like this and you just put it in between here and just slightly 
gently push upwards and you'll start hearing this machine unclip. Mine has already been apart once, so it will come out probably easier than uh, it will at the beginning. Once it unclips basically all throughout, then you can just uh, slightly lift it up. There is some very light adhesive. And there you go, you have access inside your machine. So this is the inside of the machine right here. And basically we have the main port right here, which is populated with the NVMe drive from Asus. And there is another port right here. This is another uh, NVMe drive, as you can see right there. We can basically lift this uh, cover out of place and it's held in with some adhesive here. There we go. And now we have access to the full port, which is this guy right here. This is your wireless antenna. And anyway, I'll be removing this drive from this position right here. That's because this gives us access to the higher bandwidth, which we will definitely take advantage of with this drive right here. And then we'll move this drive into this bay right here. And after all of that is said and done, we'll basically put the machine together and then we'll boot up into Windows and clone the original drive onto the new drive and then we'll see some big differences. Let's take out the OG drive right here. So this is uh, no longer a Torx bit. As you can see, this is just a normal Phillips head. So let's uh, get a Phillips head here, change the bit out and just go to town. So basically now we can just lift up and pull backwards on it until it comes out. So this is the drive that came with my unit and as you can see it's nicely tucked into this uh, heat wrap or I should say heat shield right here so let's just uh, remove it by just putting it backwards. There is uh, also something in the source of a cover on it. I would say this is also for heat dissipation on the drive which I would very much like to take off and transplant onto my existing, my the other, on the other drive there because, well, it seems that there is also some uh, thermal um, pads in there as well in order to keep it level and also keep it cool. So let's just transplant this over onto the new drive and then move this drive over here so that we can see the speed differences. So this is uh, the one that came with this machine right here. So that's why I think the performance was a bit lackluster because, well, there's nothing to write home about about this guy. Also, I will show you in a photo what is this drive because I don't really know at first glance. It doesn't really, it's not very obvious who's the manufacturer for this drive. So it just seems to be something a bit generic. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a photo of this. I'll post it up in there so that you can search for yourself and see uh, if you're happy with what Asus decided to give you with your brand new machine. Now let's take care of this screw on this side here before we try to put it in. There we go. Take our drive and mount it into the secondary slot here, like so. Push it down and then get the screw back to fasten it in place. Let's now take care of the new drive. All right, so let's open this guy up. Ta-da, there we go, brand new. Or is it this way? All right, there we go, brand new 990 Pro. I am very much happy and excited to get this installed into this machine. Put the thermal uh, putty on it so that uh, it stays nice and cool. I will not take my time to remove this. I don't think it's uh, gonna be a huge huge difference if I just put it on top of it but you can definitely let me know down in the comments and tell me how stupid of an idea it is to just put it on top of it like that without uh, you know caring that much but I would say that we should be in the green let's uh, let's take care of this uh, little shirt here right so let's put the heat sink back on top of the drive all right like that and now we can put it back in place and let's do that now 
All right, gently push down on it, just hold it there. Now it's stuck itself to the back of the thermal uh, pad over there. And get your screw back out, get your normal uh, Phillips head screw and just, you know, gently screw it into position. That's it. All right, so just like that, we have two drives. So now this is the original drive that came with the unit. Uh, this is the serial number and stuff like that. If you are interested about what's happening with this machine, and why it felt so sluggish. We will get to see that once everything gets uh, said and done. And this is the original slot now that is of course populated with this 990 Pro NVMe drive from Samsung. Yes, you can definitely tell me in the comments that there are better options out there for the money and I am all ears. So leave your comments down in the box below. I always do my best and go through each and every one of them. Thank you and you are so awesome. Right, so now we have the drive back here, we have this drive back in here, we are basically one step ahead, or I should say, away from buttoning up this machine. Let's just put the stickers back on top of them and basically close it up. So just like that, we're ready for the first boot. Let's go into the BIOS and tell it to still boot out of the old drive and then we are good to go for the cloning and then we'll see the difference. All right, so now that we have everything up and running, let's go up and open up, which uh, something that's really important here. And as you can see right here, this is the Samsung 980 Pro. It is unallocated, so that's 931 gigabytes of free and allocated space. What you have to do is basically right click and new simple volume is gonna be the option to go with. Click on next, next again, assign any letter to it, it doesn't really matter. You can just keep it as is, click next all the way, finish. Wait for the system to basically have it uh, allocated. And there you go, we can see it's a fresh new volume here, volume E. And once that is done, you can basically use a free software like Disk Genius, which actually works wonders. Open that up, um, I'll leave a link down in the bio if you are interested in that, it's very simple and easy to use. Basically, shout out to you, Salem Techspert. You know you, you are absolutely amazing, man. So that's where I got the idea of uh, using this genius. It actually has an older interface, but who cares? I like to be efficient. So basically we have here both the drives. Actually, actually this is the original drive right here. And basically this is the HD new strip volume Samsung 980 Pro, or I should say 990 Pro. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and open up the tools here and say clone disks. Yes, that's what I want to do. Select the source disk that you want to basically copy over or clone. Uh, we're gonna go with, uh, well, with this one right here, which is basically disk number one, the one that we had in the ACES before. So let's click on okay. Yes, we wanna migrate the current system to it and let's click the target disk which is of course the 990 pro as we can see right here click ok will be overwritten yes we understand that let's leave the partition system partition size let's make it a bit bigger let's make it uh 250 gigabytes because windows and stuff right when finish change the boot sequence yes automatically set the boot to uh, from the migrated target system so set to boot from the migrated target system okay 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 right let's click on start yes and hot migration reboot to windows yeah let's just do hot partition so a uh, hot migration and basically we are going to now create a snapshot of what's happening with the system right here. I'll get back to you guys once this is done. So let's have a boot test right now and see if all the hassle was actually worth it. And for how, how much. That's it. So, as you can see, 17 seconds. It is what it is. So, is it all worth it for a few extra seconds in the boot up sequence? Well, I would say yes, because you're not only getting those extra seconds, actually the device feels a lot snappier. Uh, these are the results with uh, Crystal Mark uh, when I tested the hard drives, both the original one and also the uh, Samsung uh, 990 Pro over here. 
and overall the device feels a lot snappier. Not only that, but I basically doubled the capacity of this laptop right here, which I, I took it from one terabyte to two terabytes. So in my honest opinion, yes, it is definitely worth the trouble. And actually it is no trouble at all because this laptop, it's actually made with this sort of thing in mind. So that's a very good step to take into future-proofing your investment. This has been my how-to guys with this laptop right here. Don't forget as always to leave your thoughts and comments down in the box below. And I would kindly like you guys, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up because that definitely helps the YouTube algorithm. You're absolutely amazing and wonderful, guys. And until the next one, peace out, stay safe, and see you around. Oh, and uh, if you do want to see how you can fix maybe a rattling noise or something wrong with your device, you can definitely check this video up here. I will go through, um, well, basically showing you how to open up and tighten some screws which have been loose from the factory. That's a bummer. But yeah, you can check that out until the next one. So stay awesome, guys, and see you.